So you're coming to Las Vegas and you probably have looked at these three hotels, but which one do you choose? It's tough. It's complicated. They're all right next to each other, all three of them. And uh, they all pretty much have the same price and experience. And they're all Caesars properties. So which one do you choose? Well, I'm going to cut through all that for you. I just stayed at all three of these pretty much back to back to back for a minimum of three nights each. And I did everything from the pools to the restaurants to the bars to the lounges. I did it all. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. I'm going to start with number one, location. Now, this is tough because they're all pretty much in the same part of the strip and they're all pretty much right next to each other. Uh, location number one, I'm going to give it to Flamingo basically because it's closest to the center of the strip and it's right across from Caesars Palace. Number two, I'm giving to Harris, and that's because it's the furthest north. It's the closest to the most luxurious part of the strip when Encore Venetian Palazzo Resort World. And number three is Link. It's really just a victim of circumstance. All three of these locations are awesome, but for the Link, it is the hardest of these three properties to get across to the other side of the strip. All right, let's talk rooms. Number one is Harrah's. Uh, the Harrah's rooms I was highly impressed with. They are fresh, they were clean, they were modern, um, they were large. I really got an executive style from them. I really liked my room at Harrah's. Uh, number two was Flamingo. Uh, the Flamingo is one of the oldest properties in Las Vegas. I believe it's pre-1950. Given that, and given that I booked the cheapest room at all three of these properties, I thought the cheapest room at Flamingo, given its age, was actually pretty good. It had some edge, it had some personality. And number three is Link, and you're not staying at Link for the rooms, you're staying at Link for pretty much everything that goes on outside the rooms. Uh, my room at Link was the smallest hotel room I've ever had in Las Vegas. It might have actually been the smallest hotel room I've ever had on the channel. Um, is there anything more important than the pool in Las Vegas? I mean, probably the casino and the gambling, maybe food, but the pool is right up there. Number one, Flamingo. Um, I think the Flamingo probably has the best standard pool in las vegas is probably between flamingo and the cosmo but i can tell you right now that the vibe at the flamingo pool is way better than the vibe at the cosmo it is organically fun it's organically festive the pool area is beautiful the crowd is awesome uh the pool is actually quite large flamingo pool is easy number one here number two link i never saw the link pool coming basically it's because it's so small and no one ever talks about it but what it lacks in size it makes up for in fun it is one of the craziest most energetic standard pools i've ever been to it's really more of a de facto pool party day club than it is like a hotel pool people are out there getting crazy tons of energy a phenomenal dj the influence pool at link is something you should definitely definitely put on your radar uh, number three is Harrah's. I had a fantastic time at the Harrah's pool. It was actually one of my better pool days ever in Las Vegas. But in terms of the pool and the pool scene, it comes in at number three. The restaurants. And this one is a surprise to me. I'm putting Link at number one. The promenade is filled with tons of different types of restaurants. You would never get bored there. And they're all very approachable and easy on the budget. Favorite Bistro is a new find of mine. I'm in love with that place. And Hash House Agogo is a Vegas institution. You must put that on your radar for breakfast. The other two hotels were pretty much a letdown in terms of dining. Uh, I'm going to put Flamingo at number two because they do have that brand new steakhouse called Bugsy and Myers. I would say it could maybe be considered a top 10 steakhouse in Vegas. I did have a really good dinner there, but that's really about it for the Flamingo. And when it gets to Harrah's, Harrah's has even less. Uh, the number one restaurant at Harrah's is Ruth Chris, and I'm not being sarcastic at all. I had a better dinner at the Ruth Chris in El Paso than I did here at the Las Vegas location. There really isn't much for eating uh, at the Flamingo or Harrah's. That's why they come in at number two and number three. All right, bars and lounges, no surprise here. The link comes in at number one. Uh, not only did it have a ton and the most like casino bars, um, it had also a lot of options in the promenade and it had one of the coolest places to get a drink of all time. That is the upstairs martini bar at I Love Sugar. Harris comes in at number two. There aren't a lot of standalone bars um, at Harris, but you do have Piano Bar. And Carnival Bar outside is a great place to catch a drink and listen to some awesome live music. Flamingo comes in at number three, although it did have a dedicated uh, casino bar called Bugsy Bar. In terms of standalone bars, it really didn't have much of anything at all. All right, let's talk about the casino. This one surprised me. The link comes in at number one. Um, it had a casino within a casino concept with O'Shea's. I love that place. It's a fantastic spot to play some beer pong, get a pint of Guinness, or do some gambling in an area that has a completely different vibe than the rest of the casino. Other than that, the Link Casino was surprisingly large. It was modern. It was updated. It was spacious. It had a lot of options, and it was easy to navigate. The Flamingo comes in at number two. 
And this one is surprising because it is the oldest property here. And back in the day, they could have never envisioned what modern day Las Vegas gaming needs would be. Flamingo had a really decent casino floor. It was buzzing, it had a lot of energy, it was easy to navigate, and given its age, it was surprisingly updated. Uh, Harris absolutely comes in at number three, it's no question. Uh, this casino floor was disjointed, it was disconnected, it had horrible feng shui, it wasn't the easiest to maneuver, it just really didn't have any direction or purpose. It kind of just seemed kind of piecemeal together. That's why it comes in at number three. All right, crowd. This one is really, really tough because um, it's subjective, and I thought the crowds were all pretty much similar. I am going to put the Flamingo at number one. This was definitely the most bustling crowd, the crowd with the most energy. Uh, the pool was amazing. Lots of fun people out there having an awesome time. Uh, the Flamingo is, I would say, number one for sure. Harris comes in at number two for crowd. It was like Flamingo Light. I would say a little bit more tame and maybe a little bit older, but still a great crowd. Link comes in at number three. Uh, the crowd there is pretty ruckus. The crowd there is pretty rowdy. Uh, I'm definitely not opposed to that. I'm just letting you know that it was definitely probably the most wild of these three. Theme. And theme is important because experience helps create memories. Uh, the Flamingo is pretty easily number one. Uh, there's a rich history here. If you look up uh, the past of the, of the Flamingo, it's actually quite fascinating. And of course, it has that awesome South Beach type of vibe. It does feel like a little, little slice of the tropics in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip. All right, number two is Link, and compared to the Flamingo, it doesn't have much of a theme at all, and compared to the other hotels in the area, it has no theme. But it is designed for millennials, and it does feel really modern, and plus I love the casino within a casino concept over at O'Shea's. Uh, number three is Harris. Harris has no theme at all. Um, I really got like an executive type of vibe from their rooms, and it just seems to be a good hotel for a good price on that part of the strip. All right, last category, price and value. You know, price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Um, all of these are pretty much the same. They're almost dead even. I'm really splitting hairs here, but I'm going to give number one to Link. Um, it does have the cheapest rooms, usually, and I think it is probably one of the best entry-level rooms, best budget rooms you can get um, in Las Vegas. Number two is Flamingo. I was actually surprised. Uh, for a couple different reasons. Number one, um, I couldn't believe how cheap the property was compared to how nice it was. And I couldn't believe how nice the room was compared to how cheap it was. So uh, Flamingo definitely comes in at number two. And then number three is Harrah's. Again, these are all pretty much the same. Uh, but in terms of price and value, I think Harrah's is probably third among these three. So when I add it all up and take into account the rankings, who comes in first, who comes in second, who comes in third, number one and number two were razor thin. They were so close. But the Flamingo does come in at number one. Just behind it for a second place finish is a surprising showing for the Link. And then Harris comes in at number three. But again, these are all super close. They're all Caesars properties. They're all right next to each other. And they all are going to give you a pretty much similar experience. It really depends on what you want out of your property and then choose accordingly. Do you want location? Do you want price? Do you want rooms? Do you want gambling? Do you want bars? Do you want restaurants? Pay attention to the preceding categories I talked about and then book accordingly.